Kratos has revealed the first rendering of the unmanned aircraft it's creating under the U.S. Air Force's Classified Offboard Sensing Station, or OBSS, program. While information regarding the drone is scarce, we do know that it will place strong emphasis on scalability, modularity, and affordability, and that it will use sophisticated design and manufacturing techniques to assist in achieving these objectives. Join us today in Drone Zone to know everything you need to about the newest drone from Kratos, the XQ-58 Valkyrie. Breaking Defense was the first to publish an artist's rendering of Kratos' OBSS design, as well as an interview with Steve Fendley, president of the company's Unmanned Systems Division. The Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, awarded Kratos a contract in October to build and test at least one OBSS prototype. AFRL also awarded General Atomics a functionally comparable OBSS contract, however the value of their transaction was different. The rendering shows a stealthy design with a visible continuous chine-like wrapping around the fuselage, as well as serrated top-mounted air inlet and shrouded engine exhaust. It has a broad-spread V-tail and a basic swept wing. There are some similarities to Kratos' XQ-58A Valkyrie drone, particularly in the rear two-thirds of the design, However, the OBSS lacks the cranked wing of that design and has a different tail configuration. This design has many similarities to other existing manned and unmanned stealth aircraft. The scaled Composites Model 437 and the Model 401 Son of Ares, from which it evolved, General Atomics Avenger, Boeing's MQ-25 Stingray and the concepts that led up to it, the EADS Barracuda and the Lambda-winged Joint Advanced Strike Technology fighter jet idea are just a few examples. Some of the Kratos OBSS design aspects appear to be derived from Northrop's Tacit Blue Stealth Demonstrator. Tacit Blue, on the other hand, had a complicated flush air inlet on the top of the fuselage, which Kratos's OBSS design did not include. Of course, there is no indication that Kratos's OBSS drone is based on any of these earlier prototypes. The unmanned aircraft is a distinct new addition to the company's portfolio, but has yet to disclose more particular details about the design's features or origins. There are few facts known about its predicted performance or other qualities. In an interview with Breaking Defense, Fendley, president of Kratos' Unmanned Systems Division, was careful to speak in broad strokes rather than specifics about what OBSS might be capable of. That is, in general, correct. However, there is a chance that an indestructible aircraft will carry a superb sensor. In answer to a question about whether OBSS would carry a simple payload to help keep costs down and make it less of an issue if it was lost on a mission, Fendley remarked. We could, for example, integrate a $5 million to $10 million sensor into one of our systems. However, despite the fact that the pricey sensor would be on an attritable aircraft, that precise tail number would almost certainly not be undertaking an attritable mission. It can be difficult to define the phrase attritable. An attritable platform, drones or anything else, are those designed with a focus on balancing capabilities against lower costs to produce something capable of performing certain missions in higher risk environments where commanders may be hesitant to employ a more expensive and technologically advanced asset. Fendley used a definition of a system that costs $2 million to $20 million per unit and provides a high performance versus cost system solution that the user can afford to potentially lose at some non-zero rate in this recent interview. The Kratos XQ-58A, which the firm has long stated that it thinks will eventually have a unit cost of roughly $2 million as the production develops, would be at the lower half of that price range. Another feature of attritables that distinguishes them from traditional UAS equipped with their superior sensors is dispersed lethality in the case of weapons and distributed sensing in the case of sensor missions. Perhaps you have a really broad sensor capability because you have 10 of these mobile aircraft carrying subpar EOIR systems. You're fusing the data you get from those aircraft remotely and the result is a really precise picture. Let's say three of those planes are shot down, you still have a very strong picture and intelligence because you have a seven sensor baseline rather than just one pricey sensor. The distributed strategy lowers costs while increasing mission effectiveness and survivability. We're talking about sensor extension and range extension when we talk about attritable aircraft in general, not necessarily OBSS. Assume a human system is equipped with certain sensors, such as EO or IR, and the purpose is to improve standoff range against a specific danger. When asked to describe a hypothetical OBSS operation, Fendley remarked, a small number of attritable aircraft could fly in formation with a manned aircraft. 
As the mission develops, the manned aircraft pilot will declare, OK, this is as far as I'm going toward the threat because we're getting close to a contested environment or risk region for me. The unmanned aircraft would then be charged with flying deeper into the contested environment or risk zone and gathering and sharing data to better advise the operation and the warfighter. If you've made it this far in the video, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future content. We're aware of at least one Kratos UTAP-22 flying with what seems to be an IRST system as part of the Air Force's Skyborg program, which is also overseen in part by AFRL. Skyborg is focused on the development of an artificial intelligence-driven computer brain and a suite of associated systems that will be able to operate semi-autonomous loyal wingman-type drones flying networked together with manned aircraft in the future, as well as fully autonomous unmanned combat air vehicles or UCAVs. Renderings of hypothetical Skyborg-equipped drones provided by the Air Force throughout the years include nose-mounted sensors that appear to be IRST devices as well. The other business involved in the OBSS project, General Atomics, has also flown Avenger drones with underwing IRST pods during Skyborg testing and as part of other ancillary projects with a clear focus on improving manned-unmanned teaming capabilities in air-to-air -air combat scenarios. Multiple IRST-equipped drones networked together would have substantially more capabilities than a single human or unmanned device equipped with this type of sensor technology. A single IRST source can establish a target's bearing but has difficulty determining its distance. By simply adding a second IRST source to the mix, the range to contact can be determined more quickly via triangulation. Having more sensors simply improves the fidelity of those tracks and increases the formation's overall capacity to track multiple targets at once. Furthermore, relatively small stealthy drones equipped with passive IRST sensor systems may be difficult to identify and even more difficult to engage, all while relaying targeting data to other friendly platforms. These drones could also be outfitted with other sensors instead of IRSTs, such as small but capable radars or even electronic warfare payloads allowing for more complex tactics to be employed, but advancing IRST capability over the battlefield appears to be the most logical application for such a concept, at least at first. This will significantly improve the lethality and survivability of human and unmanned types that would be supported by such a group of OBSS aircraft. The moniker OBSS may have originated from this distributed offboard sensor capability. Again, this is just conjecture based on what we know so far. Regardless, there appears to be some form of sensor in Kratos' OBSS design snout. The design is cropped in a way that appears to be done on purpose to prevent offering a complete view at the front of the drone. On closer inspection, there appears to be a fairing extending back along the tip of the nose, which could indicate that something is protruding from the front. According to Fendley, this category or class labeled a tritable aircraft truly refers to an affordable objective solution to a UAV problem or need without an expectation for the aircraft to be in operation forever. This class aims to optimize capability versus cost and life. It is clearly not the intention to utilize these assets once and then discard them, but they are also not intended to be in service for a hundred years, as the B-52 is. To be suitable for this mission and to meet this need, the Tritables are designed and manufactured with design and manufacturing trade-offs that ideally maximize capability in each performance or functional area and throughout the aircraft's lifetime right up to the knee and the curve where the price would significantly increase versus performance, he said. The Tritable aircraft provide a mass advantage in war, which is widely seen as the present requirement to meet near-peer adversary threats. Because we can afford to buy and deploy a huge number of Tritables, they answer the mass equation. Affordability is the most important factor in enabling us to compete with the other primes, he added. Our differentiators as a company are speed, agility, and price. Because of our size, selling a number of $1 million or $3 million airplanes every year is a healthy business model for us, so even at these price points, we are appropriately incentivized. It's unclear when Kratos's or General Atomic's OBSS design will fly for the first time, but the AFRL contracts cover an initial phase of development that concludes next October. Following that, one business is likely to move on to the actual flight testing stage of the program, with development continuing into 2024. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think of Fendley's interview. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video just like I've enjoyed making it, and make sure to comment with any future videos that you're interested in watching.
I'll be seeing you all soon, but until then, watch this video to learn more about the US's switchblade suicide drones that are shifting the war balance. And as always, subscribe or crash. <laughs>